Hey, welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this Tuesday evening. Got a major update for you on what could be a big potential record-setting storm early and middle of next week. And I'll tell you, all signs are pointing to the potential. Now, that's the key word, potential. We still have a week to go, and we will continue uh, to monitor the model trends over time. But this definitely has the setup potential for a big one through much of the southern tier of the country with the potential for ice and heavy snow as we enter next week. Now, if you're new to the channel, Welcome, my name is Gerald. I'm a meteorology major at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte. And if you haven't already, go ahead, like the video, subscribe, and hit that bell for the latest notifications. That'll make sure you're up to date with the latest model guidance and a breakdown of that guidance. Also, go ahead, comment, let me know where you're watching from and what you want to see as we enter this very active stretch. And uh, it's really not even entering an active stretch. It's more continuing it as January 2025 has really felt uh, like a very long time so far. But it's only been two weeks, and uh, I think the next week's going to drag on a while as well, at least for all my snow lovers in the Deep South. All right, folks, with that said, let's go ahead and jump on in to the latest data. Now, taking a look at uh, this uh, kind of what you're seeing loop next to me, this is the latest run of of our European computer model from this afternoon and showing that potential of a major storm in the south with a major Arctic blast working southward, having that potential to bring very active weather over the next couple, uh, or really the next week or so. And you can see that very well on the model. Now, the thing about it is, this is not the only model showing it. A lot of the times, you know, we see these big fantasy winter storms at 300 hours out on the GFS or even sometimes on the European, but this storm, folks, uh, is showing up on both our major uh, global models and is now within a week. This would be around next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And given it's Tuesday evening, you know, you kind of connect the dots. We're not all that far from this potential. Now, let me go ahead and start you off with the setup here. What is going to kind of drive the potential for this storm? And it all starts with cold air. To get any kind of snow or ice, you need that very cold air, especially when we're talking about areas in the deep south, potentially as far south as the Gulf Coast. So the question is, well, will we have the cold air? And I'll tell you, I feel very confident we will. Here's why. This is our latest ensemble GFS. Uh, so basically, it's a bunch of different GFS runs put together. They find an average of it, and this is what it's coming up with. And all the blue areas you see on the map, these are areas of troughing or lower heights. And that indicates to me that we have a pocket of cooler air. And generally, that cooler air can help to kind of fire off some stormy weather. Now, it could be stormy weather if it's springtime, or it could be snowy weather during the month of January, like we are currently in. And you'll notice as we get through the middle of this week, this is a Thursday afternoon, uh, January 16th. So going only about two days out from now, uh, not a lot of blue. We've got some blue here into the northeast that could fire off some lake effect snow, maybe even a little clipper system uh, that could bring some snow into the interior northeast. But other than that, it's really a lot of orange and red on the map. So you're thinking, all right, well, where is this big pocket of cold air that you're speaking of? Well, this is when it's expected to enter the lower 48. Here we go. This is Friday. This is Saturday, Sunday, and we'll get into Sunday evening. Uh, and into Monday. So this is the 19th and 20th of January. And, uh, you know, we're at the evening of the 14th. So again, folks, not that far. And check out this massive block of cold air digging south into the lower 48, moving down out of Canada. And this would easily have the potential to bring very cold air, cold enough for snow quite far south. And that's what we're going to be watching. Uh, this has been something we've been confident in for at least a couple of days. Now we would have this big shot of Arctic air. In fact, I told you well during early January, January, it would be an active month, and uh, it's continuing here on the models to show that pattern, and you'll notice that uh, area blue hangs around for a while. It stays all the way through the 22nd, uh, even into the 24th. Check out this, another drop of that blue, uh, more Arctic air spilling southward, and then it looks like the pattern moderates a little bit around uh, the end of the month. But between now and then, the pattern looks ripe for winter weather and cold air. So let's first break down the cold air, and then we'll talk about the winter storm potential. Uh, this is our temperature anomaly map on our European operational run from this afternoon, starting Friday afternoon. So you'll you'll notice a lot of orange on the map. And that's kind of that little bit of ridging that's going to build out ahead of this potential trough. And uh, that's going to warm us up a bit later this week. So you're going to want to do any yard work, any outside plans, any uh, fun outdoor activities. Friday afternoon here looks great. Looks about average, if not above average, uh, through much of the middle part of the country going into this weekend. Now, it's as the weekend enters, though, that notice what happens. This is Saturday afternoon. Uh, that big block of cold moving southward, a potent front uh, 
swinging on through that's going to kick up the wind. That will kick up some snow and rain as well and during this transition period. And you'll notice all of that blue beginning to move southward into the lower 48. And I'll tell you, it hangs around and it gets darn right nasty out there. This is uh, let's move it out even a little bit more. Tuesday morning, January 21st, folks, we've got temperatures that could be 30 to 40 degrees below what they should be this time of year during that time frame, including Texas, all the way down through Louisiana, the Florida Panhandle. And if I move it even further ahead, uh, that blue even tries to get as far south as the Florida Peninsula. So you see that we've got the cold. That's not a question at all. In fact, I'll go ahead and show you some of these temperatures. These are expected high temperatures starting Sunday afternoon. So Sunday afternoon, we're going to struggle to get into the teens, even up into the Dakotas, up into Minnesota. As we get into Monday afternoon, another shot of uh, very cold air continues to work southbound. And uh, we're going to struggle to get uh, above freezing into Tennessee, Kentucky, Oklahoma. Notice that freezing line there in blue, still warm into the south. Uh, but as we get even further and we hit that Tuesday time frame, Tuesday afternoon, high temperatures below, folks, we might not crack freezing in cities like Memphis, Dallas, Nashville, uh, potentially Raleigh and Charlotte struggling to get above freezing by Tuesday afternoon as this cold air mass locks into place. And if you take a look at the low temperatures, uh, check this out. This is Monday morning. We're down into the teens, into the Tennessee Valley, the single digits in the Ohio Valley. Moving it even further ahead, we're getting well down uh, into those very cold temperatures into the Carolinas, lows maybe into the single digits through the mountains of North Carolina, teens in Charlotte, Raleigh, Nashville, into even Little Rock and Memphis, and then 20s potentially as far south as the Florida Panhandle. So that's not going to be a problem. I can guarantee you we're going to have cold air by next Tuesday and Wednesday as that big Arctic blast pushes southward. Now, the bigger question mark here, I think, is what about a storm system? Is there one to feed on this cold air and potentially produce a major winter storm? Well, I think there will be. Now, before we get to all the craziness uh, of the potential Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday storm, let's take a look at the storm before that, this weekend. And I do think uh, this one could uh, produce some active weather. So this is Saturday afternoon on our latest uh, European model. And you can see these little blue lines. These are uh, those very cold height values. This is that big block of cold air moving southward and with it, a cold front that's going to likely fire up some snow into the Ohio Valley, up into the northeast. You can see that in the blue. We've got rain into the southeast. So it might be raining uh, Saturday and you're probably going to be saying, well, that crazy guy on YouTube lied. There's no snow or ice or anything. Uh, well, this is just kind of the appetizer. This is that transition period from a warmer time frame to a colder time frame. Now we'll move it further ahead here. Uh, that kind of works on through and again could bring some snow to the northeast. Then there is a signal in the models for another little area uh, of energy to ride up along this boundary, and that could produce some light I-95 snow. I know plenty of folks in Philadelphia, New York City, up through Bridgeport into the Massachusetts area complaining not a lot of snow. Well, you could get a little bit out of this one. This would be Sunday into Monday. So this is, again, less than a week out now, about five days or so. Uh, so definitely not out into La La Land, as uh, I kind of call the uh, longer range here. Definitely in range of watching. Now, not a big signal, but definitely some light snow there on the I-95 on this afternoon European run. And the GFS run, very similar story. Here's the first little storm that could bring some snow into the interior northeast, portions of the Ohio Valley, and then rain it down into the southeast. And then that little secondary piece of energy, slightly different on this model, further south, closer to the Delmarva, uh, into uh, Richmond, potentially into Del Delaware, uh, maybe even New Jersey there, but you get the idea. A piece of energy that we need to watch on the models here that could potentially lead to some East Coast snow. Now, that signal's not the big one, uh, and we'll talk about the big one next, but before we do, let's take a look at some ensembles with that first snow signal. What are the odds that uh, that actually comes to fruition and we see some snow? Well, I think pretty good here. These are the GFS uh, ensembles or just the... Um, American model, all the different models from the American model uh, put out on the map here. You can see pretty high probability of interior northeast snow, even snow potentially into Ohio. This could also crank up some more lake effect snow uh, by Sunday into Monday and maybe snow as far south as the apps uh, into North Carolina and the Virginias would not surprise me with this setup. Then you notice that little flare up of some snow signals uh, or a snow signal developing along the I-95. Now, not off the charts by any means, but definitely worth watching and mentioning for my folks up into the Northeast by next or by this Sunday into next Monday. 
That's the GFS, the European ensembles for the same time frame. Uh, well, here it is. You can kind of see that uh, snow signal beginning to build in through the Ohio Valley, up through the Northeast. Again, I think that first little burst into the interior Northeast, not so much I-95, but then you get that little secondary piece of energy and that increases your chances of snow already running about a 30 to 40% shot from Boston down into Northern Jersey, uh, into New York City, potentially down into the Philadelphia area with that first storm signal. Then comes the big one after that, or at least the big potential. And I'm going to keep using the word potential. We're about a week out and we're going to need to see more confidence in the models. But uh, this is one of the better, if not the best signals I've seen for snow uh, in a seven day time frame in the deep south. And I think a lot of seasoned meteorologists would probably agree, uh, at least for the first time in a while, we've seen a signal like this. So here's the setup. This is our latest European model. And I know you want to see all the fancy colors with the snow and the ice and we'll get there. Don't worry. Uh, but let's going to talk about the meteorology behind it first because synoptically you need to know what's happening uh, to kind of break down if the model is making sense with its ground outlook or its precipitation map. So this is our vorticity map at 500 millibars uh, and you can also just look at this as a storm energy map. Where is there energy for a storm to kind of form and potentially bring that wintry mischief? Well here it is. It starts out west through California and Nevada and basically what we've got folks is just this big block of very cold air. We feel confident in that and this is just a little piece of energy kind of rotating uh, around our big Arctic air mass. And that's a recipe for wintry weather. We call this an overrunning event. Basically, this energy is going to produce enough precipitation that it overlaps with that Arctic air mass and could produce that snow and ice concern. So here it is, uh, starting out into California, into Nevada, then getting down into the Four Corners, starting positively tilted out around the Four Corners. This would be uh, Tuesday morning on this model on the European. And when I say positively tilted, I mean the orientation of this trough is in this manner. This tells me the storm is just cranking up. That energy is just beginning to build. It's beginning to spin. It's beginning to create some lift. Uh, that's how it starts Tuesday morning. Then we get this further ahead into uh, right here. This is about Wednesday morning, a day later. Then our energy becomes neutrally tilted. This tells me the storm is beginning to strengthen. It's getting towards that peak intensity and then hits negative tilt, uh, which is kind of the peak of a storm's life cycle right over the south. And then even another signal behind that with another piece of energy on the afternoon European model run, all rotating around this big block of Arctic air. All right, so that's exciting, uh, but is the European the only model showing it? And now it's a reliable model on its own, but yeah, this, this is the GFS model, which is also showing that potential and uh, we're in for business, folks. So this is Sunday afternoon, a little bit different on the GFS, and this is interesting. Uh, it starts the same way. We've got that block of cold air moving in. We've got this Pacific energy, but the GFS doubles down. It has two pieces of energy. We've got a little uh, or very compact kind of strong Baja low, and then another piece of energy back out into California, Nevada, and Oregon. Now what happens is the two kind of combine a little bit on the GFS and uh, really get ramping up here at the same time frame. This is Tuesday. Tuesday morning into Tuesday evening. This is Wednesday morning and then into Thursday. Same time frame, the same idea, a piece of energy swinging around this Arctic air mass and bringing with it the chance of winter precipitation. So let's get into the fun stuff. Let's get into the maps you want to see. This is our, uh, again, European model. We'll do this one first, then we'll do the GFS, and then we'll look at the ensembles, and uh, then I'll kind of let you get on your way here. But uh, we'll start kind of where we left off. Sunday afternoon, here's that little piece of energy, potentially bringing some northeast snow, and then the main show begins. Here we go. This is overnight Monday into Tuesday. Our energy out west kicking up precipitation. We've got an all-out winter storm over the state of Texas, uh, from Houston into Dallas, Austin, San Antonio. Then it gets into Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas by Tuesday afternoon. And remember, folks, this is a very cold air mass. So we're seeing winter weather all the way down to the Gulf Coast of Louisiana on these model runs. Now, again, let me throw a disclaimer out here. This is going to change. This is going to shift north. It's going to shift south. It's going to shift left, right, up, down, you name it. Between now and the time it happens, intensity is going to go up. Intensity is going to go down. The key is following the trends. Right now, uh, the trend we need to look for is, does the storm stay? Does it have legs? The models have been hinting at it. Today's the first day. They've been locked in on the same storm at the same time. Uh, before this, they were kind of playing hot potato and throwing it back and forth. 
now let's watch the trends. Does it keep going? Uh, and if it does, then you know we're in store for uh, for potentially a big one. Uh, so here we go with Tuesday evening, getting well into the deep south, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina. Heck, even the Florida Panhandle getting in on a nasty winter storm. All that pink you see, uh, or I guess kind of that uh, peachy color, if you will, that is freezing rain. Sleet is the purple, snow is blue. And folks, this is an all-out winter storm and a potential, again, potential, I'm not saying it's going to happen right now, but a potential uh, one that you remember for a long time, potential record breaker for somebody with major snow, major ice, and a just big mess from Texas through the Carolinas, Tennessee, even into Virginia, West Virginia, and then rides up the coast and becomes a big snowstorm for Philadelphia, New Jersey, New York, and into the Northeast by the long run. That's the European. What about the GFS? Well, folks, it's it's pretty similar. Here we go. This is uh, into overnight Monday into Tuesday. Same time frame, same idea. Winter storm beginning into Texas less than a week from now, pushing it east through the Gulf states into the southeast. Major snow, major ice. Uh, it's, it's winter precipitation. It's on the map here in the deep south on this run of the GFS. Then gets into the Carolinas by Tuesday afternoon. Florida Panhandle seeing some ice, heavy snow uh, to the north, ice in the middle, rain to the south, the normal kind of progression of a winter weather event. And all this continues through the southeast into the mid-Atlantic. And then the difference here is it kind of just is wave after wave after wave of winter weather. This is Wednesday afternoon into Thursday here. Uh, and then just doesn't quite get as far north on the European and doesn't impact the Northeast quite as much. And you can see that in the ensemble. So I know my folks in the Northeast are punching air right now, thinking of the fact the South could get a big winter storm and you're still missing out. Well, there's a way to go here. We'll see what happens, but we'll take a look at the European ensembles, starting with ice. What is the chance of freezing rain uh, accreting to a significant amount? Well, already very high on the ensembles, and look at how far south this is, folks. This is not something you see every day. Uh, Savannah, Georgia is already running about a 40 to 50% chance, or maybe a little inland from Savannah, but that area running almost a 50% shot of uh, accreting freezing rain to a significant amount. Heck, all the way down into the Florida Panhandle, seeing the potential for ice with this setup uh, back into southern Louisiana, Texas. Yeah, it's not very often you see a map like this. So go ahead and, you know, frame it, kiss it, put it on the wall, or maybe not so much for ice, but if it were snow, and I'll show you that one next, you might do that. Definitely a unique setup here uh, with record potential. And you can see that continues and rides up the coast a little bit and then fizzles out by next weekend uh, as the storm is likely gone by that point. Now, snowfall chances. Uh, same thing, European ensembles. What is the chance of at least an inch of snow accumulating? Uh, well, you can start to see a big signal by early next week into Texas, uh, New Mexico, Colorado, then building into the deep south. Uh, heck, Louisiana and Texas already running a 40 to 50% chance of at least an inch of snowfall uh, by early next week. And look at the chances extending all the way into the Carolinas, Myrtle Beach, Florence, Wilmington, running about a 40% chance of accumulating snow uh, of at least an inch already. And this is still a week away, folks. It's just uh, it's almost unheard of to see something like this on the models. And then as we move it ahead, a small signal into the Northeast, you'll notice it continues, just not quite as high. And the reason for that is it's almost too good to be true for the Northeast. It's a little too cold. It's a little too suppressed. Now, could this trend back the other way? Absolutely. So stay tuned. Do not uh, you know, leave for good and assume that this one's over for you. Definitely not there yet. Uh, so that's the European ensembles. You can see a pretty good chance for snow there. Uh, in uh, areas that really just don't see it very often. Now, the GFS ensembles, what is it showing? Well, here we go, same time frame, big snow potential down into Texas, already running that 40 to 50% chance mark. Uh, Louisiana, same story, and then you get into the deep south and check this out, Charlotte, Raleigh, uh, over to Greenville, South Carolina, and North Carolina, for that matter, back down to Atlanta, already at about a 30 to 40% chance of accumulating snow on the GFS ensemble members. And uh, then you'll notice a lower signal, but still a small signal in the Northeast as uh, the models are still kind of are fighting it out and bickering over it uh, in the long run. So folks, kind of just to summarize it for you, there's big potential next week. And I'm going to continue using the word potential because it's not locked into place. We've got a way to go. Anyone who's a snow lover in the South knows a week is basically an eternity. Uh, but this is one of the stronger signals we've seen. And we're now getting into that five to seven day time frame where we're not watching the pattern anymore. The pattern absolutely is fake. Favorable, we're watching the trends. Is this going to trend up? Is it going to trend down? Are we going to trend sideways for a little bit? And that will be the million dollar question.
Alrighty, folks, that's all I got for you on this Tuesday evening. Again, if you haven't already, like the video, subscribe, and hit that bell for the latest notifications. With that said, though, stay safe out there, stay warm, think snow, and I'll see you all tomorrow.